result of that? What is going to happen because of that? Let us see. Let us look. Let us examine the society. You look to your own children. In England, I have been dealing with this now for 20 years. Most of the Muslims who went to England have come from the Indian subcontinent, either from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh. Most of them went to England only for one thing, money. They went for money to earn a good life. Maybe they thought that our children will get an education. And they sacrificed, many of them, not all of them, but many of them, they sacrificed the religion. They didn't teach their children the religion. And if they taught them anything, it was, it was more culture than religion. What is the consequence of that though? You see, I say to them, look, I know I come from the non-Muslim society. I have seen with my eyes how many old age homes we have. You know, old age homes? They are special places where they send the old people. And they go and live all together, all the old people. It's because we don't want to really see the old people. The ones they can hardly walk anymore. They need help to go to the toilet. Their children are not looking after them. Their children are not caring for them. Why? Because their children are materialists. They follow the materialist philosophy. They have been brought up. And in their mind is the idea, wealth equals happiness. It's not happiness helping my old parents. What do I care about them? I want to enjoy my holiday, my beautiful wife, my nice new TV, and I want to watch all the programs. Why do I want to look after my old aged parents? Let me give them to someone who is professional, can do that properly. You know what? We have people in England, old people in England, who have not seen their children for 12 years. 12 years. And some of these old people, they become Muslim. You know why they become Muslim? Because they see how we treat our parents. They see how we respect the old people. Just because they are old, even if they are not Muslim, we honor them. And because of this, they say, you know, my kids, they don't even live far away. They only live 40 minutes away, one hour away driving. But they didn't come to see me for Christmas for 10 years. Christmas is like the main thing where families get together. They didn't even invite their own mom, their own dad for the Christmas celebrations. They didn't even bother to visit them, not even sometimes even to give them a phone call. But you know what? This is beginning to happen to Muslims, to Hindus, to Sikhs. It's beginning to happen right here in India. I am sure you will see it as people become more and more obsessed with materialism. When we bring our children up with the philosophy, work, work, money, money, work, work, money, money. Okay, you teach them work, work, money, money. You think they're going to care about you? Why will they care about you when you're old? Why will they care about you when you're reaching an old age? You taught them work, work, money, money, work, work, money, money. Not Ami Abu, money, money. Why will they think about you when you get old? Because all they have in their mind is money, enjoyment, fun. Let me enjoy the life. And this is what we find. You see, the consumer materialistic society has another problem. And the other problem it has, it is going to destroy itself. It has to. It's inevitable. I challenge any of you to pick up books of history and read them and study them. It is the same again and again and again and again. The history is always repeating itself. The lesson of history is the same lesson. You will always find when a civilization becomes powerful, it becomes rich, it becomes wealthy, and it becomes obsessed with wealth and materialism, and the morals begin to decline, and the people no longer, they care about right and wrong, they only care about enjoying themselves, then you will see it is only a matter of time, and not a long time, a short time, before that society will collapse. It will collapse. 
Because society, what is society? It's when human beings live together, cooperate together, try to achieve something together. We work together in order to reach some benefits. But if it is every man for himself and all I care about is me and myself and enjoying myself, then doesn't this contradict the whole idea of society? So what you find happening is the children no longer care about the parents. The people who are disenfranchised, what we mean here is the people who are poor, the people who don't benefit from all of this wealth, because you will always find there are some people who are left out. But they are still exposed to the same advertisements, to the same TV commercials, to the same ideas. They are still exposed to those things. So they are thinking, yes, I need money. I need wealth. How can I be happy if I don't have these things? Now, if they don't get them by earning, if they can't get them by earning the money, what do you think they will do? Huh? They will steal. They will steal in order to get it. They will rob people if they have to get it. And this is certainly what is happening in the United States of America. That's what's happening there. People kill each other. Kids, they will kill someone. They will kill someone for the trainers because he's got a pair of Nike trainers. He's ready to kill and take the life of another human being for a wristwatch. And it's not just to do with the fact that he's got a drug habit. No, it's to do with his mentality. He thinks that if I wear these shoes, I have respect. I'm something. It makes me important. Why? It makes me important. Why? Because that's what the adverts tell him. The tick. Just do it. To him, if you've got this, you're something. You're special. So they feel, ah, oh, now I have these shoes, now I have this jacket, now I have this thing, I am something, I am important. As if a piece of cloth, which is probably made in some sweatshop, where people are not even paid a living wage, for a paltry sum of money it is made, maybe for, I don't know, a few rupees they make it, and they sell it for thousands of rupees or pounds or dollars. But they think, oh, it's something special. It's going to make me important. So what happens? Violence begins to escalate. Crime become more. Now what you find, people are living in like castles. The rich are now beginning to live in enclosed areas with walls and cameras and security guards. And only the rich people can go in. It's happening here in India. Special enclaves for the rich, because they fear the violence. They fear what's going to happen. It's happening in the States. It's happening in England. It's happening in China. Because all of us, we have become obsessed with this materialism. We have become overtaken by this ideology. And the thing is, we are never happy. The more we have, the more we want. You think you will be happy, what? When do you think you will be happy? You have your own flat, you have your own car. No, then you want another flat. I can rent it and I can relax more and I can have another car for my wife and then my daughter, she can have a car and my son and he can have a car and my son-in-law, he can have another one. And then, oh, maybe I can get a boat and an airplane. And when will it end? It never ends. There is no ending to it. Because the Prophet wasallam, nothing fills the belly of the son of Adam except the dust of his grave. It's only when you're dead, then your greed will end. It's only when you are dead, your desires will be extinguished. You know the Prophet wasallam, he said that this dunya, this world and everything in it is cursed. Cursed. There is no blessing. There is no benefit in this world. It is cursed. It is something that will cause you harm and illness and sickness and malcontent and disruption in yourself and unhappiness and unease. The whole dunya is like that. The whole dunya is like that. Except, except the scholar 
of the religion.